Hello everyone, my name is Sister Eleanor. I'm a member of the Teo Community of Interfaith Franciscans. I'd like to welcome you today to our Vesper Prayer for this Advent. We have another day of Advent. We have um, now, it's December 10th, and we're heading towards the third week of Advent. We're in over the middle of the second week now. So um, we have our candle that is lit here for peace and also it is our candle that is lit on our advent wreath this is the second candle that is lit it is the candle of light so we have now two candles lit we have the candle of light and the candle of promise so I'd like to um, say a prayer for the candle that is lit in the advent wreath Lord Jesus, help us remember that you are the light of the world. Help us to keep our hearts always open to you. Amen. And we also have our prayer for peace. God of hope who brought love into this world, be the love that dwells between us. God of hope who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought joy into this world, be the joy that dwells between us. God of hope, the rock we stand on. God of hope, be the center, the focus of our lives, always, and particularly during this Advent time. So that is our prayer for peace today. And let us, again, set our intentions for peace. As I said a few days ago, it's a good idea to just dwell on what peace really means to you. You know, does it mean an absence of action? Does it mean a still small voice within that, that guides you every day? What does peace mean to you? Um, so let us dedicate our whole prayer time, in addition to our intercessions, to peace, peace within each and every one of us, to really know what that truly means. We banter the word around quite a bit, and we know it means the absence of war, we know it means the absence of violence, but as I said before, do we f define peace only in what it is in the absence of? Does it have merit on its own? If there were no wars in the world and there were no violence, there was no violence, would there still be peace? Or is it something that we always have to define as the antithesis of war or the absence of violence? So it's an interesting concept to think about and we pray that the Holy Spirit enlightens our hearts to really know for each one of us it'll be something different but to really pray and reflect on what peace means to us. And so now, I have a little bit of a different setup here in regards to um, how I'm doing prayers. So if I'm kind of looking off to the side, it's because uh, one of my things that I used to use, one of my electrical uh, computer type things, um, actually kind of uh, died on me. So I have to, in the meantime, just have this set up. So bear with me, please, for... If there's any little catches here or there. This is uh, O Come O Come Emmanuel by the Piano Guys and um, they play quite beautifully. So just listen to this before we get into our actual Vespers for the day.
So that was a beautiful rendition, I believe, of Come O Come Emmanuel from the Piano Guys. And now we are going to go into our actual Vesper prayer for the day. O God, come to my assistance, O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, our Teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The psalm we are praying today is Psalm 72, which talks about the Messiah's royal power. The antiphon is, I have come, I have made you the light of all nations to carry my salvation to the ends of the earth. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice, that he may judge your peoples in justice, and your poor in right judgment. May the mountains bring forth peace for the people, and the hills justice. May he defend the poor of the people, and save the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. He shall endure like the sun and the moon from age to age. He shall descend like rain on the meadow, like raindrops on the earth. In the days, justice shall flourish in his days, and peace until the moon fails. He shall rule from sea to sea, and from the great river to earth's bounds. Before him, his enemies shall fall. His foes lick the dust, the kings of Tarshish and the sea, the sea coast shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings will fall prostrate. All nations will serve him. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, our Teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Antiphon again, I have made you the light of all nations, to carry my salvation to the ends of the earth. Beautiful imagery about the Messiah and what the Messiah, what will happen when the Messiah comes, what happened when Jesus came, that the mountains would bring forth peace for the people and the hills justice, that he would defend the poor, that he would rule from sea to sea, that he would bring all nations subject to him, that he would be a king of all nations and of all people. Now we continue with the next part of this psalm, but the, the um, antiphon changes now. The Lord will save the children of the poor and rescue them from slavery. Now what does that mean really? Is that really the poor and rescue them from slavery? What does that really mean? From the slavery of and the oppression of things that are not for our good, things that are not, or circumstances, or anything that does not have us follow the true path that we are called to follow. That anything other than what we are supposed to do in this lifetime can be a sort of slavery for us because we're following things that are false. So now we go and pray this psalm. For he shall save the poor when they cry, and the needy who are fatherless. He will have pity on the weak, and save the lives of the poor. From oppression he will rescue their lives. To him their blood is very dear. Long may he live, and may the gold of Sheba be given him. They shall pray for him without ceasing, and bless him all the day. May corn be abundant in the land to the peaks of the mountains. May its fruit rustle like Lebanon. May men flourish in the cities like grass on the earth. May his name be blessed forever and endure like the sun. Every tribe shall be blessed in him, and all nations will bless his name. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone works wonders, ever blessed his glorious name. Let his glory fill the earth. Amen and Amen. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
We call upon your name, Father, Mother, and pronounce it blessed above the earth. Give your people the fullness of peace and the justice in your kingdom. Amen. The Lord will save the children of the poor and rescue them from slavery. Now let us praise God in this canticle from Revelation. And the antiphon today is, Now the victorious reign of our God has begun. We're getting very, very much closer to the victorious reign of our God to begin in our own lives, each and every one of us. We praise you, the Lord God Almighty, who is and who was. You have assumed your great power and you have begun your reign. The nations have raged in anger, but then came the day of your wrath and the moment to judge the dead. The time to reward your servants, the prophets, and the holy ones who revere you, the great and the small alike. Now have salvation and power come, the reign of our God and the authority of his anointed one. For the accusers of our brothers and sisters is cast out, who night and day accuse them before God. So we have nobody now between us and God. Everything is in the open when the Messiah comes to us, and everything is good and we are joined to our Father, Mother, God. And this is our prayer for Advent to be fulfilled at Christmas. They defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Love for life did not deter them from death. So rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell therein. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Antiphon again. Now the victorious reign of our God has begun. Dear ones, let us go further now and listen to God's word in Scripture from James. Let's ponder on what possibly God might be saying to each and every one of us. Be patient, my brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer awaits the precious yield of the soil. He looks forward to it patiently while the soil receives the winter and the spring rains. You too must be patient. Steady your hearts because the coming of the Lord is at hand. See, the judge stands at the gate. The coming of the Lord is at hand. The coming for each and every one of us. That the Lord is within us, as I said. And we might, uh, many times block our relationship with Him. So this Advent, let us not block anything, but be open and trusting and honest with our Father and Mother God. So that we may reap the reward of joy and happiness and peace at Christmas time. And now our response to this is, Come and set us free, Lord God of power and might. Come and set us free, Lord God of power and might. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved, Lord God of power and might. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God. Come and set us free, Lord God of power and might. Now because this is such a wonderful season and there's so much expectation and hope, I like to actually play, if possible, a couple of songs during our prayers. Now we are going to have the Canticle of Mary now sung in song uh, and we are going to pray the um, antiphon together for today for the canticle, and that is, The one who is coming after me existed before me. I am not worthy to untie his sandals. And we remember that quote from John the Baptist. So, a beautiful thing today that we remember John the Baptist, a beautiful imagery during Advent. This man who lived on locusts and honey and, and lived in the desert. He stripped himself down to nothing so that he actually would live a more authentic, truthful life. 
This is what he had to do in order to do that. Everybody has to do certain things in order to live their own truth. So listen to the truth that is within your hearts. And let us listen now to this canticle of Mary. who talk, And she talks about all sorts of blessings and rejoicing. Let us also have in our hearts blessing and rejoicing this Advent season. So let me find this for you. And this is by Bukas Pallad. is a um, man who is singing this right now, or produced it, I should say. upbeat Magnificat <laughs> and so um, but that's how it should be this time of year we should be truly upbeat and rejoicing 
in our Father, Mother, God. So, um, we also now will repeat the antiphon. The one who is coming after me existed before me, and I am not worthy to untie his sandals. Now, dear ones, let us pray for each other during our intercessory, intercessory prayer. This Advent is a special time of year. I can't not stress it enough. We're already in the year of mercy. The door in Rome has been opened for all of us to go through to this year of mercy so that God's mercy will be just abundantly showered upon every one of us, every one of us here and all people in the world, no matter what their faith tradition or if they have no faith tradition. So we praise God for his goodness, that his mercy is going to be showered upon us and is daily, but most especially during this year. So to Christ our Lord, who humbled himself for our sake, we joyfully say, Come, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, by your coming, you rescued the world from sin. Cleanse our souls and our bodies from guilt. Please let us be cleansed from guilt. Once you, you, know, you offer whatever it is in your life that is not so good to God and you ask God to change it for you, don't keep beating yourself up over it. So we pray that we are not constantly repeating to ourselves all the horrible things that we've done and reliving it over and over again. So we say, come Lord Jesus. By the mystery of your incarnation, we are made your brothers and sisters. Do not let us become estranged from you in any way. And we say, come Lord Jesus. Do not judge harshly those who you have redeemed at such a great cost. And we say, come Lord Jesus. And certainly, like I say, we will have mercy in our lives now. More so during this year coming and also mercy, abundant mercy every day. But there are certain times of year and certain years where God seems to give us even more choice, choicest blessings. So we thank God for what he's giving us right now. No age, O Christ, is without your goodness and holy riches. Enable us to merit the unfading crown of glory, both here and in the hereafter. And we say, come Lord Jesus. Lord, to you we commend the souls of all of our faithful departed brothers and sisters. Having died to this world, may they strive, may they be alive in you forever. And we say, come Lord Jesus. We pray for all of us that are here today, every single person that is present, that we may have the light of Advent shine beautifully in our hearts to overflowing. Just be filled with the light of God, the light of the Holy Spirit right now. We praise and thank you, God, for all the good things that you're about to do in all of our lives that are here in all situations, for all our family and our friends. We praise and thank you, dear God, for Brother Sean and Brother Rob and for their, fa for their monastery at Stuart. We praise and thank you for Sister Sue, for Sister Nancy, for Sister Miriam, for Sister Elizabeth. We praise and thank you, God, for Sister Elaine and for Brother Paul. We praise and thank you for each and every one of us not logged in. And we thank you for the blessings that you give us every day. And you continue to give us and will give us in this beautiful season. And we say, come, Lord Jesus. We ask you also, Lord, to touch our earth mother, Gaia, and to shower your choicest blessings upon her. Keep us on the, the right road that we should be walking on to sustain her and love her as we should. And we say, come, Lord Jesus. We pray for the animal kingdom and for all kingdoms here on earth, the stones, the plants, the trees, all of the water, the sky, the soil. We praise and thank you for all of your gifts and the beauty that it brings us. We praise and thank you and ask that you bless all of the kingdoms here on earth. And we say, come, Lord Jesus. We praise you for the light that you send into the world right now. 
a light that is acknowledged from so many different peoples throughout the world. We thank you for the light that you bring to us each and every day and the small blessings that you give us every day and the miracles that you create in our lives every single day. And we say, come Lord Jesus. And now just in this serene silence now, the sacred space, just talk to your Father, Mother God, your Father, Mother God, from your heart now. And we say, come, Lord Jesus. And now to, together let us join hands in a circle of light during this holy season as we pray the Our Father, Mother God. Our Father, Mother God, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those around us who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into any temptation, but please deliver us from every single evil. For yours is the kingdom, and yours is the power, and yours is the glory, now and forever. Amen. Our concluding prayer before our blessing. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the paths of your only begotten Son, that through his coming we may be found worthy to serve you with minds that are made pure. We ask this through our Lord Jesus, the Christ, the Cosmic Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless each and every one of us and protect each and every one of us and bring us to everlasting life here and beyond. Amen. And now for our final blessing. As I said, I just have to find these things a little bit different right now for me. Now this is a winter prayer and a winter blessing. During the lengthening days of light, may our actions be lighthearted upon right and noble impulses. During quiet hours beyond dusk before dawn, may we take time to think over the events from the day and plan for the good in the morrow. In the light of day, may we extend our personal borders, caring and sharing expansively. So the world grows bright from our presence. May we blaze as beacons of harmony, lighting the path ahead to nurture efforts toward lasting peace. May we all act with kindness towards all. May we all be blessed with kindness towards ourselves. May we embrace our family and friends wholeheartedly, and may we in turn be embraced by them. We ever grace our world wide family lightheartedly. So let us send that grace out to our worldwide family and have our worldwide family bless us with the grace as well. We praise and thank God for everything that is bestowed on us and we thank you for being here today as you are always. So we hope that you will have a lovely evening, a good night's rest and we will see you tomorrow hopefully and we will be praying for each other. Remember to follow Brother Sean's retreat his beautiful Advent retreat at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 8 p.m. GMT on the Doves for Peace channel. So thank you again and namaste.